response video to the modern mystic. Yay! Uh, anyway, but yeah, this video isn't too good. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, just a quick rephrase. So um, we've had this long discussion. I mean, really long. Uh, you know, we have breaks, you know, every year or two in between, but anyway, of this brain and how it functions, and we have this basic agreement that it's a hardware. It's, it's not unlike a computer in that it's, you, you make the machine, or, and evolution has made a machine, and it's programmed. Um, there's things you could call really hard to change and things that are easy to change in terms of how the machine reacts, but it's basically an input-in device it's messed around with inside the head, and then there's output out. Um, my argument is, <laughs> is that there is this, this qualitative aspect that's established through the programming, through the hardware, um, where feelings are not, feelings are created as an illusion in the atmosphere of our brain, in the brain function, and that feelings are used, um, have the function um, in their evolutionary course um, of creating essentially carrots and sticks. And that these carrots and sticks, although they are created by programming, create a conduit through which another part of our brain reacts to the world as if these carrots and sticks were put into reality. So this is the way um, our brain, um, our functionality, um, is made possible. The way our logic is able to um, develop is because we can reward thinking that doesn't cause cognitive dissonance and we can punish thinking that does co cause cognitive dissonance. If you have conflicting ideas, ideas that can't be blended together, 2 plus 2 equals 4, 3 plus 3 equals 5, something like that, um, where the two don't match, so somehow something has to be broken. Um, uh, you know, then that's, this is how logic is performed, and it's how these organisms are motivated. This is how it creates a notion of a self-interest, um, and, uh, it's, and it's more, and I put notion in quotes, because everything else in our brain is a notion. It's just bullshit. Um, but the fact that we feel is not bullshit. <laughs> it's... It's got a substantive quality to it. It's a gap between brains. It's a way brains communicate. It's a method through which information is transferred. And the only thing interesting about the transfer isn't the substance of the information. It's the fact that the information is coded with this concept of a value designation, a negative or a positive, a good feeling, a bad feeling. And that that... Um, has to be accounted for. It's not an. It's not a. It's not just a mechanical function anymore. It's now extends to another dimension of of functionality, like a gravity or a magnetism. It is now doing something different than what a computer does. Yeah, <laughs> very different from what a computer does, and. Um, that's got to be accounted for. It's an illusion, but again, I'd argue it's a powerful illusion. It's a substantive illusion. It's something created by the brain, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have any meaning. It means something beyond just its creation. It has an implication, a meaning implication. It's creating actual positive and negative value in a meeting, in a meaning des the dimension, in a value dimension. It's creating positive and negative substance. It's a byproduct and it's a functional product. The illusionary carrots and sticks become real negatives and positives in a value equation. The harm and comfort those things cause have real implication, even though it's a cartoon in our perception.
the cartoon has a burning effect on the screen, or some other way to metaphor it. Anyway, sorry, longer than I thought I'd have to go, just to catch you up to speed where I can start in here. So, after he does a little bit of snarky, you know, <laughs> implying your, your nuts are shriveled, let's see what he says. Despair and suffering and jealousy and rage. Um, it's all very interesting to discuss, and a lot more people can do it, because the language is obviously more adapted to, to doing it. But um, I'll just say that when you go on to this new level, um, there's no jumping to the philosophy level. You can't mix the two. You really have to... Yeah, well, says you. Um, and I'm not mixing the two, and that's the whole point. That's the point you're missing, and the point I thought I had reiterated, like, numerous times. The only part of our psychology I'm giving any substance to at all, any meaning to, is the part that has the negative and positive component. What feels good, what feels bad. The, but the good and bad feeling. What causes the feeling, okay, like what we love or what we hate, the judgment imposed by those feelings, the exact formation of what it makes the carrot out of or what the stick is in our brain. That is utter and complete bullshit. <laughs> That's arbitrarily and um, circumstantially contrived by the biology to have us perform certain acts. So the value is not in the thing. The value is in our desire for the thing. The um, nastiness of the thing in the world is not in the thing. It is in our, rev our rev revulsion. Okay, The elephant man was only ugly as a stupid notion in our head. And um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Grace Kelly was only beautiful as a stupid notion in our head. All right? It wasn't a reality of our psychological judgment. It wasn't somehow have any integrity whatsoever. It has no integrity. But the fact that some things make us feel good and some things make us feel bad is the only part of our psychology I'm acknowledging as substantive. So all I'm saying is, is the qualitative feeling of good and bad is what's important. The psychology that, that, that is attached to it is superfluous, idiotic, and nonsensical to the philosophical discussion. The philosophy is, I'm saying, the philosophy should show that no mind whatsoever. It is it is nonsense. It means nothing. It means as little as what does a frog like, or what does a, I could ask any organism in the world and say, what do you like and what do you dislike? Its judgment of what it thinks of sushi is completely subjective rubbish of no value, of no meaning philosophically whatsoever. So don't conflate these things. Don't, don't, do not include, because I concede um, that consciousness is a phenomenon separate, okay, from raw programmed computer crap. Computers aren't suffering. Computers are not doing that. And that's what makes me different than that computer, is that I'm having a qualitative feeling experience, and there's no way you can just write some crap in software code and create a qualitative feeling experience. It requires one of these. It requires a brain, an arrangement of matter, a special arrangement of matter. Not just electricity, just not just not chemistry, but chemistry and electricity in in a in a dance, okay, uh, uh, a nuanced dance, to create this value thing, this thing of value, this thing of a hurtable welfare, and so again, argue the one element of psychology. Well, like I said, of brain function. I don't even think it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's just psychology. It's brain function. I mean, the values, um, reality, happens even when we're asleep. Even in the dullest forms of our consciousness. Say, stay in the philosophy or move to psychology. So, if you want to move to psychology, like it seems like you do, if you want to talk about feelings, then you have to accept... Like I said, I don't even see how you could get that from any of the, my videos. I've made it clear. I don't want to talk about feelings. I don't want to talk about what somebody personally thinks of purple rubber bands. I, I have no interest in that discussion whatsoever. 
or how many times somebody wants to whack off a day or how many how much how much food gratifies them or how much they love looking at their you know the spiky hair on their grandchildren's cruddy little monstrous heads i don't give a fuck about any of that crap what i care about is that i as i understand it all these mammals are doing something substantially different than what paramecium's are doing and substantially different than even what insects are doing or maybe even different than what reptiles are doing there's something else happening in their brains that's not happening in these other brains and that's what i want to talk about but you can't go shouting and yelling at pyro if he starts talking about willpower and what would be a very interesting subject about if we say to people you've got to improve your will so you can stop doing this sort of thing and start doing this sort of thing which could open up to very interesting yeah well we know that even if we had that discussion even if we we did bend into that kind of psychological crap that what we're going to come to the conclusion is, is that you actually have to have a program that says, I'm going to improve myself. You have to have the notion to do that. You have to have a running program that somehow has been programmed to say, this is a good character trait. I'm going to keep this one. And you're going to keep it wise because somehow your brain had to validate it. It had to make it win the fight. And it won the fight because of this whole carrot stick thing. Because it was associated with other things that were associated with carrots. Carrots, carrots, carrots were all the neural connections to that kind of character trait. And so there was no sticks in the way for there to be this connection. And so it got glued back, it got glued on as frosting on the cupcake of our brain um, because there was nothing negative to, to whip it off, to, to say, no, this isn't going to work. We can't stick this in our head. This, this isn't a good enough ethic. No, it was a good enough ethic. It was a simple idea. Our brain rolled it around in the head and said, yeah, it fits with 2 plus 2. It fits with 4 plus 4. This will work. Yeah, go with this idea that you should um, do the best you can to, um, uh, have a, 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 to mold your own psychology, even though you don't have an own psychology, and that program itself was, you know, in a way... Um, um, the billiard balls were put into motion through some other mechanism. It doesn't really matter. You need this billiard ball eddy to be able to perform the act of the self-improvement. But it's just a program. It's just an agenda that uh, um, survived the filter of your brain and was accepted as good idea. And it can only be a good idea if there was a concept of good conversations but we can't every now and then flop over to philosophy and say but the willpower doesn't exist we've just got to go with the things on those levels that willpower at that level exists just like well again like I said I have made it clear I've only talked about good and bad as feelings in and of themselves I have not talked about what makes you feel good or what makes you feel bad, only about the good and the bad, the suffering and the comfort, the discomfort and the comfort, the satisfaction and the dissatisfaction, the deprivation and the completion. I mean, that's all I've talked about. I haven't talked about how um, uh, uh, the silly monsters are motivated to acquire that. And as I point out in my end game is that that's how exactly stupid it is, is that you don't need any of the needs, you don't need any of the desires, you don't need any of this shit, it has nothing, we shouldn't be obeying the carrot or the stick, because the carrot and the stick have been contrived um, to manipulate us. My argument is that the carrot and the stick are things, all right? Again, it's not when they show up in our brain, it's just the fact that when they do, they're real. They have substance as a thing in themselves love ex exists on that level and pain and suffering and envy and all those things they all exist on that level as well, well so, again i'm talking about the qualitative effect of them i'm not talking about how they arose i'm just talking about them as an effect them as a as a as as a thing existing i'm not talking about the credibility of their maturation, fertilization, what kind of brain bullshit drew you to the conclusion or drew your brain to the conclusion that it's a good idea to create carrot or a good idea to create some stick. And we know some of these carrots and sticks are not created by any um, human program. They're created by 
a very crude reptilian program or even further back than that. I mean, a nut crush doesn't have a goddamn bit to do with your conditioning or your willpower or any of your little psychology, what you love, what you don't love. It doesn't have a damn thing to do with any of that shit. doesn't matter how I condition a kid. If I crush his fucking nuts, he's going to go fucking ouch. Um, I might be willing to play some sort of a role in that. I've no idea. But if you kick off, I'll just say, if I'm watching or listening, I'll be listening out to keep it in the correct category and jumping over to beat people up because they're um, using philosophy when they are talking psychology um, will not actually be allowed. I shall raise a red card and say no. If <laughs> yeah, okay, well, go ahead. Like I said, you quote me, though, when you do that. And I'll be, I'll be perfectly happy to have somebody watch me and make sure I don't do what you just suggested, is, which is play both sides of this fence. Because I don't play the other side of the fence ever. I'm just acknowledging the existence of the other side of the fence. I'm acknowledging that psychology is intimately um, related to the creation of a massive amount of our feeling character. All right, that without the programming and all the bullshit that comes in through this bigger brain part, the big eyeball part, the, 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 the monkey brain and the, and, the, and the human brain, that the basic qualitative, substantive, native feeling thing, the nut crusher, the thing that requires you to actually crush its nuts before it feels something, okay, that's a small percentage of our, our, our human experience. But again, I would argue that it's probably the harshest part. I mean, it's the, har it's the part that's going to hurt you when you're dying of cancer, is this physical part, is this old reptilian brain is going to torture you then. All right? It's not going to be some ideas in your head that are going to be hurting you. It's not going to be human ideas about the fate of my grandchildren, or some worry about that, or some monkey idea of, um, oh my God, I'm fucked up, I'm fucked up, some worry about being fucked up. It's not going to be the monkey idea. No, it's going to be the hard reptilian insect idea that, you know, my fucking organs are strangling each other and my organs are sending fucking whip signals to my fucking brain. And it's not doing me any fucking goddamn good and it's a goddamn horrible thing that my body is creating whips. All right? Um, and because those things have a reality. Those whip signals are meaningful. And so just be clear, I don't think I've just gone into loopy, loopy, woo-woo psychology land because I've acknowledged the fact that our brain creates the phenomenon of conscious sensation. We're in psychology. Um, all, um, anything that we feel that we feel is allowed. So obviously, Pyro's willpower is allowed. Okay, so... Um, no. <laughs> no, it's not okay, because that's not what I've said, and I think I've been clear enough, and so I don't think that's very fair to tell you the truth. But go ahead, it's all right. You can. right. I'm just saying I've made it clear now what I'm talking about, all right? I'm talking about the mass of the thing. I'm not talking about the shape of it. I'm talking about the... Well, I, I've, I think I've done the best I can to describe what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, I don't care what the cartoon looks like on the screen. I'm talking about the fact that it creates light pixels and they bounce off the screen. I don't know, you know, you get me? I'm talking about the, the mechanics of the feeling nature. Um, and the fact that at its mechanical level, at its substantive level, it's it's doing something. I'm talking about the radiation of the radio signal, not what's on the radio signal. See if that goes anywhere with anybody. It, it opens it up to a much wider audience because, as I say, the, the language is much more adapted to that sort of um, context. That sort. Of well, well, like I said, it's uh, language, language. I say the word feel, and you say I'm automatically in some sort of illegitimate range where I just said, I love my red pen. No, I didn't just do that. I acknowledged something that has evidentiary reality. We can see the difference in these brain functions. And this ability to feel thing is a brain function. 
and it's a significant one in my opinion. I can't account for it. I, I, I have personal experience with it, all right, and I can feel it, like, right in me. It's a thing. I can't just call it, my program says, I find that obnoxious. That's not what's happening. It's not a computer program. It's not like any of the programs I know. All the little program things I know, the, this feeling thing is different than any of that shit. Completely different than any of that shit. It's made out of something else. And it's really, like I said, I'm just talking about its qualitative element, which is negative and positive. And when it's something in between, it's usually because it's whacking between negative and positive. <laughs> you know. So, um, and I would argue, I think, um, yeah, I have argued that it's probably not even positive. It's just negative. And it just whacks us into different degrees into that negative quadrant. It's electricity all over the place. It's just looking for a finish. Um, it's a potential dying to get home, and we've we've been burdened um, with a mechanism that's playing with that, and this is the implication of it that it's going to create this. I just created a harmable. I mean, let's deal with the word harm and the fact that this thing. I mean, again, by your suggestion that it's just programming, that it's just my computer, bippity bippity blip blip blip. Your suggestion of that is that you could make a universe just completely made out of Holocaust victims moaning in horrific discomfort. And you would think yourself not a criminal. And I think that's just wacky. I think you have to give, I've said it before, you have to give this thing the benefit of the doubt. It, it does show itself to be different in the animals. It shows itself to be different through our personal experience. There is this sense <laughs> you know, of its reality right in front of us. Um, to contrive excuses to say all that isn't happening that it doesn't really have any real value, that it doesn't really matter whether I have this civil conversation with you or whether I take a hammer off the porch and start mashing my testicles, that those two states of being are the same. I think that is an incredibly dangerous leap of unfaith or something. I don't even know what to call that, but of drawing a conclusion before there's any reason to draw it. This isn't ready to be served on the table as a completed meal. There's a, there's, this has some doubt layered on it. In my opinion, it's more than doubt, but I'm just saying it's, it's covered in doubt. You just can't say confidently and logically, your comfort state is irrelevant. Doesn't mean a goddamn thing. If the universe was just me, having my guts pulled out over and over and over again for a gazillion years, and screaming in horror, that's okay. Yeah, I got. I, I got to have doubt. I can't get rid of that doubt. So <laughs> you're gonna have to make a more effective argument that I have no worries. No worries. Be happy. Don't give a fuck what happens on planet Earth. Don't give a fuck about the animal. Don't give a fuck about the cat. Don't give a fuck about a goddamn thing. Because if it looks like it's suffering, it's not. Yeah, I, <laughs> that looks like a bucket of acid. And you're telling me it's okay to jump in. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I need more evidence that it ain't acid. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, no way.